today's tutorial i will be talking about how to make edible with a paper rose flower hello adventurous bakers welcome to my channel if you are new here and to my old subscribers welcome back to my channel i am suzanne ape let's get started these are all the supplies i'll be using with a paper glue corn flour or corn starch there is a link below this video that shares the complete supplies i use and also a template then my weaver paper conditioner this is not water this is weaver paper conditioner if you've got your own copy of my ultimate guide for making edible weaver papers you will see the recipe for making this then a plier and then a rose flower template or a rose flower cutter i'm using, going to use the template because my cutter is quite small then my weaver paper scraps from a rose flower i created earlier service paper scissors florist wire veiner and of course weaver paper i'll be making use of the plain weaver paper that is the one that is not printed now you are know, playing with our papers usually come with two sides the smooth side and the rough part when i'm working with flowers i don't care which of the sides i'm going to use because after painting or applying luster dust or petal dust the smooth or the rough sides becomes the same so for flowers i usually don't care about which type of the paper i'm going to be working on Next, I also brought out some syllable nylons, and this is the weaver paper I created, weaver paper rose flower I created earlier on. To color, I skipped that, so I'm just going to use this green powder color to show you how I colored my conditioner. Now, this is conditioner and powdered color. You could use paste colors too, just conditioner. This is not water, conditioner and powdered color or paste colors just mix it to get the shade you want and that's how i colored it now i'm getting my template and i'm going to place my weaver paper on my template you can use your flower cutter rose flower cutters and just trace out the non toxic pencil but i don't i don't want to use my cutter because my cutter is quite small so i'm using a template there's a link below this video to a printable and downloadable template now for my template i have three sizes of petals i have the smaller size the medium and the largest i'm just going to cut the shape out from my rough sketch with my scissors i'm going to trace out my petals just like this now once i'm true I'm going to place my that is my smaller petal i'll place it on a weaver paper i'm going to cut a long stripes to the same size of my template just a long stripe just like this now if your scissors is not sharp you can just place your template on your weaver paper and cut one at a time just like this but if your scissors is as sharp as mine, you can stack several stripes of weaver paper on themselves, like the way I'm going to do in the next step, and then you cut out just like this, stacking several weaver paper stripes on themselves and cut out. But make sure you're using a very sharp scissors if you want to stack to so cut out like this. And to me, this is faster if you're not going to trace on the weaver paper using a non toxic pencil. Like I said in the last video that this weaver paper is edible So anything you're going to use on it to make inscription to sketch has to be something that is non-toxic Now I'm true with this. I'm just going to put this in a syllable nylon. You could also use a ziplock bag This is to prevent the weaver paper from cracking Now I'm through cutting out all the templates I want. I just pack the, the scraps and I'm putting them in a syllable nylon. 
you can use the scraps to create your wallpaper glue so don't throw them away at the end of the day for the smallest template i have six cutouts for the medium i have 10 and for the largest i have 14 6 10 14 now they are all saved in my syllable nylon the next stage is to start preparing the flower for that i'm going to be getting my florist wire this is size 30 you can use 28 you can use 26 and with my plier i'm going to create something that looks like a loop or hook or the base of an umbrella just like this it's simple the player makes you create it without adding more pressure on your hands and i'm also going to cut out a stripe this stripe i cut out is not perfect it's just a long stripe it's just it's not necessarily straight it's just a long stripe and i'm going to color this with my red conditioned color and I'll dust this slightly using my blush brush dust it slightly with corn flour you can use corn starch and I flip it over to the next to the next side and I'm going to also paint using my artistic paint brush to paint in the color and I'm also going to apply little corn starch or corn flour slightly you will notice it's going to be stretched stretchy next i place the hook on the stripes and i'm going to be rolling it i'm just trying to create a bud like what we usually make when we're creating gum paste flowers that center i don't want to use a gum paste or pastelage to create that that's the reason why i'm using weaver paper if i use gum paste i'll have to wait for it to dry before i start applying my petals but i don't want that now you can see it's stretchy I'm just rolling it around to create a bud just like this it's very very simple now once i get to the end of this stripe i'm going to apply my my conditioner colored conditioner and i'm going to pinch the bottom of the bud well to seal it and this is ready you can see it's very very simple I'm going to keep this aside while I start prepping my petals. For my petals, it's just the same procedure of applying your color with your paint brush and then dusting slightly with corn flour or corn starch. So, for my petals, I'm going to start with the smallest petal. And I'm going to be getting three pieces of the smallest petal. Remember, I told you the total number of smaller all the smallest petals i cut out were six so i'm picking three out of those six and then i'm going to prep it so prep i'm just going to use my brush to apply my conditioned colored mixture on it i remember when you're applying your conditioner on it it's just slightly you don't want to make your weaver paper very wet next i'm going to dust this lightly with corn flour just like this flip it over to the other part and repeat the same process you will notice at the end of the day that your petal is going to be stretchy that's the result of using the weaver paper conditioner if you have not still gotten your ultimate guide for working with edible weaver paper please check the description link below this video to get your own copy trust me you will really need it in the course of this weaver paper series and if you are new here i think it's the right time for you to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of all my simple tutorials that i share once every week next i applied my colored conditioner again to the petals and i'm going to be attaching the petals to the board just like this apply the first one make sure you pinch the bottom of it then apply conditioner to the second petal you see i'm applying the conditioner to one part first then make this overlap the first one just like this and then roll 
roll the pod halfway like this next apply make sure you always pinch it as i apply each petal pinch the bottom next i apply my colored conditioner onto the last petal and overlapped it to the second one and rolled my board just like this and then apply my conditioner and seal it up it's that simple I'm just trying to create the center of your rose if you can follow the tutorial the video you'll get it perfectly remember pinch the base or the bottom of your of your petals to hold the board in place I'm just trying to glue the parts that were not properly glued while I was rolling and then this is ready clean up to prepare for the second stage for the second stage I'll be getting the second three sets of my smallest petals still working on the smallest petal now the, the second of the last three sets I told you there were six I've used the first three I'm using the last three for this last three I'm still going to color them like I did for the first ones just like this now one thing I want you to know is if you want your colors to be deeper just add more paste or gel colors or powdered colors why if you want your colors having a lighter shade just add more river paper conditioner remember to always dust your petals with corn flour before flipping it if not it's going to if you flip it down in your condition your corn flour is going to stick to your working surface and the end result is going to be messy i took my rose flower center and i'm going to close the center a little bit it's to me it's still quite wide so i'm going to close it a little bit before adding this new petals now i'm applying my colored conditioner to one part i'm just going to do the same thing i did for the first one but this time around the parts where your petals the part where two petals meet you're going to add a new one from that part the part where two petals meet that is the part of the the area where the two petals overlap each other that's why i'm going to add the new petals and then you keep rolling like you did for the first one overlap apply your your conditioner overlap and roll just like that remember to pinch the base of your petals it is very 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 simple if you've made gum paste flowers before you only find this hard so i'm going to more details because i'm considering those who have not worked with flowers before or done edible flowers before and this video is going to be quite long but i assure you it's worth the time and this is ready this is your little rose small rose this is ready you can use this as fillers for cakes and the likes but i'm not making fillers i'm going to make a large rose just like the pink one i did previously i'm just using my blush brush brush to dust off excess corn flour you can do this when you are true with the whole flour you can do it one at a time next i'm kind of opening the petals a little bit to make it look realistic and that is all for the small petals i'm going to the medium petals now 
for the medium medium petal i'm going to be picking five out of them and i'm going to be using this crate this is an apple crate the apple crate you see at the at the market i just got a crate and i'm going to be using it as um, a former to place my petals to give it a curvy shape you could also use an egg crate but i prefer this because it's larger than my egg crates so you can get your apple former or apple crates for my apples from an apple seller so i'm just picking five of the medium petals and i'm painting them like the previous ones Remember to always dust your petals after applying your colored conditioner on them. Like I said, you could use paste colors, gel colors, liquid colors, and powdered color. By using liquid color, you have to add more to, to get the desired shade you want. Next, these are ready. I'm just going to pick them up the way they are once I'm through. pick them up the way they are I'm going to place them on my apple crate and I'll leave it for about 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes to hold its shape within 15 minutes to be ready if you are using ordinary water trust me in one in an hour time your petals are not still going to be ready so that's the reason why i'm using my river paper conditioner it's better if i'm using alcohol it's going to evaporate on time and you don't want that when you're working with flowers now see i'm just keeping them on my apple crate just like this no way bakers are very very innovative <laughs> so keep them like this now i'm going to get the the remaining five petals the medium petals i said there are 10 I've worked with the first five. I'm going to work with the second five. For the second five petals, I'm going to do the same dusting and coloring. Now, for this particular one, I got a toothpick, and I'm going to roll the the top of the petal backward, just like this, roll it twice with a toothpick backward. And I'm going to place this on my apple crate. The part where I rolled is going to be facing me. Just like this. I'm going to repeat that for the remaining four petals. So this is quite different from the first five you did. The second one is going to be rolled at the top, rolled backward twice. Trying to make the petals look real. That's the reason why we are rolling it with a toothpick. You could use the bottom of or the base or the tip of your artistic paint brush or any any tool you have that is slightly round. Now I dusted my toothpick with corn flour so it doesn't stick to my river paper while I'm rolling. Now when you roll it, you hold it for one to two seconds so that the the curve you've created stays now i'm keeping this on the apple crate or your flower former if you have one to to rest for about 15 minutes so that where you curve stays and that's all for the 10 petals the 10 medium petals now i'm going to the 15 largest petals we are going to do the same coloring and dusting with corn flour but this time around we are going to fold it in a different way slightly different from the medium petals it's going to be slightly different so i'm going to pick the first seven and then i'll do the next seven now i'm adding more conditioner to thin the color of the first conditioner I made so you see that this shade of red is lighter so you can color your petals the way you like 
and you also notice that I left the top of my petals white I don't I didn't want all of it looking red so I left the top white so you can color them the way you want now at, this is the particular petal you can add your petal dust to if you want to make it more realistic go ahead and add your petal dust to them but I'm just making a basic rose flower now I'm ready to roll for this particular one we'll be rolling the two sides of the petals the two sides what I'm doing here is to condition the top of the river paper petals with a conditioner that is not colored since that part is white so I'm just using a, a conditioner that is not colored to condition the river paper top or tip if you are still watching and are still new here, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of all my simple tutorials every week. Now to the top of my petals, I'm going to roll one angle backward and then the second angle, I'm going to also roll it backward. What I mean is this, I place my toothpick in a slanted position at the top and I roll that side backward twice and then I repeat the same thing for the other side, that is the left and the right side of the top of this large petal. This is what I'm going to do for the rest 14 petals. Now I'm going to get my veiner. You can use a silicone type, but I'm using this particular veiner. And then I place my petal on it and I'm going to press it slightly with a with a foam. Then I'm going to roll. That is for the next seven, the last seven petals. I'm going to use veiner just like this and I'll roll it like the first seven petals. And then I'll place it on my apple crate make sure the part that is rolled is facing you i'm just trying to make the flower look real that's the reason why i'm using a veiner and then the part that you you rolled or folded make sure it's facing you i'm leaving this for 15 minutes my petals are ready and i'm going to be attaching them to my rose flower the smaller rose flower now i'm going to start with the medium rose flower and i'll pick the first seven the one that we just dusted and colored and just placed on the crate without folding that's the first the first five rather and then where the two flowers the last flowers overlapped each other that's where i'm going to start applying the first petal just like this now i'm not using a conditioner here to stick my petals to one another i'm using my weaver paper glue this makes it sticks well but using your conditioner is not going to stick well because this weaver paper are already getting dry now these petals is very simple to attach them just overlap them on each other so i'm overlapping the first five on each other just apply a weaver paper glue and overlap this is the third petal I'll repeat it for the next two petals once i'm true i'll do the same thing for the second set of five petals five medium petals
you are applying your weaver paper glue to the tip the base of the petals not the top the base and then you place it and overlap them on each other now you see just follow the video it's very very simple and this is ready remember to always pinch the bottom of your flower to hold it in in to hold it in shape now I'm going to the next five petals. The next five petals, when I curve the ones, and I'm going to apply my weaver paper glue to the part that is not curved, to the base of the part that is not curved, so that the part that is curved is facing you. And then I'm going to overlap it like the first one we did. Overlap. Make sure when you apply your first petal, it is overlapping on at the the point where the last flowers are attached together meet. If you watch the video, you'll be able to understand how to make this. And if you made gum paste flowers before, like I said previously, this is very, very simple to make. So keep overlapping them. Using your, your weaver paper glue. My ultimate guide for making weaver paper glue, you will see how I made them. I'm still working on the medium flowers. And this is ready you can decide to stop here if you want a smaller rose like this but like I said I'm working on a larger rose so I'm going to continue I'm going to be working with the large petals now first I will start with the petals that I did not vein those, one I, those ones I didn't place on the veiner I'm going to start with them we apply a weaver paper glue to the part that is not curved to the base of the part that is not curved make sure the curved part is facing you now at this stage i turn my flower upside down so it's easier for me to overlap and then i also bend the florist wire so that i could have attached it to the to my styrofoam in that upside down position remember to always pinch the base of your river paper rose and always remember to overlap them on one another just like I'm doing here At the end of the day your rose flower is ready this took me just about 45 minutes to create them and this is perfect you can place them on your cake and then you can use them for as long as you want please remember to check the description link below this video for a detailed written note on the supplies i used here and also for my ultimate guide for working with edible edible weaver paper also remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you have not and to my old subscribers thank you so much for your support and thank you for the tags and the feedbacks see you next week